What I typically do is divide my campus into four sections and I look at what I'm trying to, trying to depict and what, what's going to go on the canvas, ultimately it's going to be on the, on the canvas. I stare at the image a, a good bit to scale down for the size, size of this canvas because that's a vast view out there and I'm bringing it down, down in scale and size. And then I start comparing uh, tree to tree and I look at the rocks and I then ultimately decide which object, in this case it's a tree, is going to fall somewhere in the middle of the picture or off to the right a bit. So I'm going, my next, my next phase then is to start a simple contour line drawing of the tree. And I'm going to let the very first tree guide me and I'm going to slowly and carefully draw that first image in a cartoon fashion. The first thing you draw sets the stage and sets the pace for every other thing you draw. It tells you how big the next tree is going to be, it tells you how far this tree is going to be away from that tree, and it really sets the tempo. And I also think that drawing and drawing for me is kind of like a jigsaw puzzle because you, first, you put the first piece, then you lay the next piece into it, and you lay the next piece into it and into it. And one piece and one shape then tells what the next shape needs to do and how far apart it is. And it's very important in establishing shapes. So now I've established this tree, now I've moved down to this rock. And this rock is a really dominating force in this picture. So I'm going to work on identifying this rock in a very careful fashion. I also start thinking about how I'm going to reduce things and simplify things. When you're painting in the woods, you're, you're uh, bombarded with all this color and all these shapes. And it would be impossible for, for me to go through here and, and draw every little leaf and every little shape. So what I want to do is generalize some things. So particularly up here where the sky shows through, there's generally a big whitish bluish shape. So I'm going to draw that in. I'm not going to worry then so much about the, the large vast shapes of uh, maple leaves and oak leaves. But I'm just going to identify the whites. I'm going to come up here and do the very same thing. The one thing about nature is also is when I'm painting outside this time of year particularly, there seems to be so much green. There's tons and tons of green. And it's almost to a point by fall or when autumn kicks around, I'm kind of happy to see the, the change of the colors because I've been inundated with uh, green all summer long. And what I do is I draw and draw and draw, and what I typically do is look at what's there, and I'll start the images, and I'll move the images, and I'll eventually run out of canvas. So uh, it's not as if I want to compress and jam pack everything I see in one little 24 inch piece. What I want to, want to do is allow it to go off the edge of the canvas. And for me, that becomes very important because I want the pictures to appear to move on forever and continue and have this vast, expansive look about them. Okay, so I've, I've put my palette out on my French easel, and what I typically do is I leave my, my paint from previous times on my palette, the leftover, and I scrape the palette back so it gives me a nice new clean place to put fresh paint. So any paint that's left there from before, I have that left over, I'm not wasting uh, an inordinate amount of paint. Let's see what colors I use here. I always put out yellow ochre, that's, that's a very good color that I use. I'll use cadmium yellow, so that's my yellow ochre. This is my cadmium yellow, I'll put out cadmium yellow. I will put out cadmium orange, that's one of my favorite colors. So I'll put a little bit of cad cadmium orange out. That's a pretty strong color. I always also use cerulean blue. I enjoy cerulean blue a great deal. That's very good for mixing, very good for a lot of different things. And uh, a lot of times I'll use zinc white, but I also like flake white. I typically never use uh, titanium white because that's a rather warm white, and I don't really like um, a warm white. I like to use a uh, somewhat of a cool white. So then I'm going to put my other colors. I, I typically use uh, sap green and olive green. That makes for some nice um, 
uh, greens for the woods. So I'll put my sap green out there. Uh, I'll put ultramarine blue. I love ultramarine blue. I use that for sky. I use that for mixing um, a variety of different things. And then as I tell my students, what happens with an artist is that over time you are drawn to certain colors. Uh, for example, one of my favorite colors is burnt umber. And it's a color that I've been using for years. I mix it with ultramarine blue. I make nice grays out of it and I, I really get a lot of mileage out of burnt umber. I also get a lot of mileage out of violet. I'll use different violets and get a lot of mileage out of that and get a lot of different colors. But that's what I start out with my palette. So that's my simple palette. And I'll lay my colors out like so. And like I said, the, the arrangement is almost arbitrary. Um, I've tried different arrangements. I always tend to go back to, go back to using my white in this position and I always end up with violet over here and I allow my my central my my center of my palette space to be doing doing my mixing so I've got my palette knife I will mix colors and uh, start doing an underpainting and usually I'll start with the background and I'll start with the sky and the pieces of color that exist beyond the trees and I almost systematically work from the sky and the top down and the background rather forward. So top to bottom and back to front. And, and it's a little bit in a reverse of the way we see things because as human beings, perceptually, we'll see the things up front first that's closest to us. And as our eye moves up and back into the background, we start to lose sight of things. And really from a distance, we start to lose our vision so it gets a little bit out of uh, focus. And a lot of times, I'll end up with a picture that looks like the whole thing's in focus. The background's probably as much as in focus as the foreground. And some people might think that's a little bit disconcerting, but I don't have a problem with that and I really like the way that looks. And I'll use my turpentine. I'll just simply dip, dip my brush into turpentine. I'll start to look and I'll start to identify background shapes and colors. It's funny, as I'm scrubbing this paint on here, I feel a little bit like a, um, a bullfighter or, or someone doing fencing. It's like I'm attacking someone or attacking something. And I think everyone has their, every artist has their approach. And it, it's always been, for me, a little bit of a battle. I'm almost in battle with this canvas. I'm trying to you know, uh, uh, beat this canvas to a pulp and try to beat it into something I like to look at. Every once in a while, I'll see some pink in the sky. The blue will turn to pink, so I'll throw a little red into the mix. So I feel like the sky is just about where I want it. So now I'm going to switch gears, and I'm going to look at some of the greens in the background, and I'm going to make up a nice um, uh, green composed of uh, a green and maybe some cerulean, and I'll mix it in with a little bit of my blue and my white left over. And, you know, I still, I, I still, I'm not um, uh, chained to the reality of color because the perceptually the way we see as human beings, and anytime you've studied um, uh, art and color theory, you realize warm colors tend to come forward, cool colors tend to recede and move into the middle ground, and then the colors that are neutralized appear yet in the background. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix up or I'm in the process of mixing up a green that I'd like to use in the background. And I really see two greens in the background. So I'm gonna mix up two very specific greens and try to, try to work for a very specific color. And then I'll block in those specific colors. Occasionally I'll look, I'll hold my, my knife up and say, okay, is that what I wanna put down? Is that the kind of color I wanna use? Is that gonna make me happy? Is that gonna make the picture function? And if not, how can I change it to make the picture function? So now I'm gonna to start to look up here and I'm gonna to start to add some more background colors. And I've chosen the lighter of the two and I'll typically do that. So I'll block in the light greens first and the kind of yellow green. It does have a bit of a cerulean in it but it's certainly a light, lighter in value. So I'm working in values, working in colors, working in values. 
And um, at this point, it looks very rough. It's looking very crude. And that's the way they start out. And as I paint, I start to refine more. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attack some of these tree trunks. And I'm gonna lay in some of those tree trunks because a lot of places the trees are blocked by some green and some growth. A lot of places they're not. So what I like to do now is establish some, some of these trees. And I'm gonna to try to lay them in in a fairly fluid fashion. Some of my tree trunks sometimes look a bit on the uh, stiff side. They don't look like nature. They don't, they don't have the beauty, that beauty, that fluid quality that nature has. I never divorce myself from what I see in front of me. And like I said, I'm not a uh, copyist. I'm not one to copy. I'm not particularly trying to copy exactly what's there. If I was, I'd probably find a different way of doing it. I'd probably, you know, use photography and um, uh, work from a photograph. But I, I want this picture in the end to appear like it was a specific location. And I want someone to say, if they could find this spot, come back here and say, hey, that's where this guy made this painting. Now I, now I see it, I get it. I'm looking at what's out there. I wanna be sure that I'm, I'm responding to the landscape, I'm responding to what's there. I'm working in a quick fashion, but it's starting to look like a woods. It may not look exactly like this woods, but it's starting to look like something. And that's what I'm going for. I want something to appear to be the main woods. That's where we live. I've made this home for over 30, 30 some years, and uh, I'm sure I will continue to stay here. And I, 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 my, my feeling is, is certainly one of the most beautiful places in the world. You know, and I think that's another thing, you know, when you're an artist, when you're a painter, you have to decide what you want to do with your work. And it's a little bit like, well, what do I want to say with my work? You know, what am I trying to do? And many things I'm trying to say, some of the things I'm trying to say is, wow, nature is really beautiful. Wow, nature is really engaging. And wow, something as ordinary as a couple rocks and some trees really look beautiful and really look extraordinary. I want my pictures from a distance to look like a scene. And then as you get up close, I want it to appear to be organic. I want to appear to see paint and gooey marks that don't really look like landscape anymore, but they look like, they look like uh, globs of paint or pieces of nature. So that's one of my goals. And I've had that goal and I've had that idea for many, many years. I keep doing it. Sometimes I feel like I'm there. Other times I feel like I'm not there. And I haven't, I haven't been successful. I have, haven't, haven't achieved my goal. I haven't achieved what I'm trying to do. But the key, part of that key is looking. You gotta keep looking. It's all visual. The visuals are important. It's imperative. And you gotta keep looking at the picture you're painting. So again, I work top, down, uh, background to foreground. And I work and work and work, and when I'm done, I'm done, I walk away from it. I've always struggled with where the painting stops. How do I finish the painting? So I either take it to the point where I'm really satisfied with it, or I take it to a point where I've killed it and then I throw it away, or I take it to the point where I'm just exhausted with it, tired of painting on it. And hopefully in the end, the painting will capture uh, the essence of this location, the time of day, uh, the season, and and capture some of the feelings and emotions I see uh, with this painting. At this point, I start out with brushes. At this point, I use a brush, plus I use a palette knife. In between each layer, I will go over the surface with my palette knife, and I'll cut off some of the excess pieces of paint that are sticking out there, so it's ready for my, ne for my ne next layer of paint. And now I'm going to start looking at it. I look at it uh, in terms of, does it look complete? Uh, where do I go from here? Is it, is it capturing the right light source? So I'm gonna start working, and I'm gonna work from the top down, and I'm gonna start adding some of, the, some, some of the different values that I now see that I didn't see the other day. 
And I'm certainly not worried about making, making the marks look exactly like leaves. I'm really just responding to what's there and I'm responding to the colors that I see and I'm trying to capture some of those colors. I don't use any medium in my oil. I just spread the paint out on a palette and put it on. Sometimes I'll thin it down a little bit with turpentine. Uh, most of the time I just put the paint on the surface. But I want it to have a, a, a life and quality, living quality of, it, uh, of its own like nature does. And that's very important. Now I'm going to start putting in some highlights too. I see a lot of nice light on top of this rock. So I'm going to try to get some of those highlights in there. Emphasize the light source and the light coming off the rocks. The surfaces look very organic and they have that natural um, found quality about them. If I wanted it to look exactly like it did there, I would take a photograph. And it's important that you respond to what's there. And I feel like on a good day, I respond in a good way and, and I end up with a pretty decent painting. Hey, I'd like to thank you for joining me on this small but intimate journey. I've never invited anyone out in the woods with me. And I want to thank uh, Mike DePice for gracefully photographing this video and putting it all together. And hopefully, my hopes are that you enjoyed the process. And maybe if you're a budding painter or budding artist, you might have learned a trick or two. And uh, in the future, keep painting.